hello everybody and welcome to this presentation of Polylog Conference Global 2021. I'm Matias Parmat. Uh, I'm talking to you from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm a systems analyst and majored in journalism. I'm, I'm a sports journalist. And I speak 12 languages at different levels. And I'm director of recruitment for HYPEA, Hyperpolyglot International Association, a nonprofit organization whose objective is to spread multilingualism. In this occasion, I will talk about long words. Um, cultural appropriation or cultural enhancement is that the big question. Throughout history, some cultures mm, become minority while others become dominant. And this process is not alien to languages. Those who speak minority languages are still forced to learn mainstream cultures and mainstream languages due to their belonging to nation states and due to pressures of the global market. Within this framework, several questions arise. Can we express ourselves with the same accuracy with or without long words? Will be able those minority language to survive despite of all the long words they have entered? The mainstream cultures have left for better or for worse a permanent footprint that we can learn and we must learn without losing our authenticity. We know that uh, a lot of civilizations have their languages in its pure form as their main sign of identity. Of course, that language and culture are not terms that we can easily mutually interchange. But throughout history, languages are one of the multiple vehicles of culture transmissions. And I will be very clear about this for clarity. In that sense, uh, language and culture are not necessarily exactly the same, but one thing fits the other. In my lecture, my intention is to show how cultures and societies evolve from a linguistic point of view. Are they authentic with or without long words? Or are they different? First of all, let's begin to say that languages themselves are not fixed structures. They are permeable mutable, chaotic, and in permanent change. As the same persons, we speak them because the societies evolve. It's not the same language we spoke 1,000 years earlier than today, rather than 500 years ago, or 200 years ago, or 100 years ago, or nowadays. It's not the same, for example, the Old English, the Old English, or the Middle English of Geoffrey Chaucer, or the Early Modern English of William Shakespeare, or our Modern English, or, for example, the Spanish of uh, the medieval Spanish of Miocid, or the um, fifth or the sixteenth century Cervantes, or um, the Spanish that we speak nowadays. Most of us are not aware that words we use on a daily basis have their origins in another language. For example, when we talk about uh, international loan words, when, for example, the English word relation or the Spanish word relación is derived from Latin relationis, relationem, etc or the word program, uh, or in Spanish, programa, comes from Greek, programa. Borrowing vocabulary from another language is a gradual process that occurs when two civilizations come into contact. Often, the donor language is perceived as bringing more power and prestige resulting in an, an asymmetrical borrowing of words from the donor language to the recipient language. 
Not all borrowed vocabulary is the same. Foreign words remain as they are in the donor language and retains the original spelling and pronunciation. Long words, on the other hand, are usually variants of the original word. Over time, these words are absorbed into the recipient language and many speakers even forget that they are from another language at all. One such word that is frequently used in English is kindergarten. It's German in origin and transliterates to children's garden. Now I will explain about the different forms of language borrowing. Um, the studies of uh, Werner Betz, 1971 and 1981, uh, Einar Haugen, 1956 and 58, and Will Weinreich uh, of 1963 are regarded as the classical theoretical words on long influence. The basic uh, theoretical statements all take Betz nomenclature as the starting point. That word in 1977 enlarges the, the best scheme by the type partial substitution and supplements the system with English terms. A schematic illustration of these classifications is here. We can observe here that the phrase foreign word used in that image is a mistranslation of the German Fremdwort, which refers to loan words whose pronunciation, spelling, inflection, or gender have not been adapted to the new language, such as they no longer seem foreign. Such a separation of loan words into two distinct categories is not used by linguists in English in talking about any language. Basing such a separation mainly on spelling is, or in fact was, not common except amongst German linguists. And only when talking about uh, German and sometimes other language that tend to adapt foreign spellings, which is rare in English unless the word has been widely used for a long time. According to the linguist Susan Kemmer, the expression foreign word um, can be defined as follows in English. When most speakers don't know the word and if they hear it think it's from another language, the word can be called a foreign word. There are many foreign words and phrases used in, in, used in English, such as bon vivant from French, or mutatis mutandis from Latin, and schadenfreude from German. This is, however, not how the term is used incorrectly in this illustration. But for sake of uh, simplifying um, the explanation about uh, loan words, we have here so three main uh, ways to uh, generate uh, language borrowings. The first of all is importation. The importation is divided in foreign words and long words. A foreign word is a non-integrated word from a foreign language spelled as it is. You know that in, in English we have coffee. Coffee at the same time comes from Arabic kahwa, but Café, the Spanish word for coffee and the French word for coffee, is used for describing a coffee store. Um, whiskey in Spanish from English, the word whiskey comes from aquavit, from aquavita, a, a water of life in Latin, or mouse or computer comes also directly into Italian from English. Those are foreign words. But the long word is an integrated part from a foreign language whose orthography is adapted for the receiving language. For example, music in English or musica in Espanol comes from French music, uh, or chauffeur in Espanol comes from French chauffeur. The second, um, the, the second way to um, language borrowing is from partial substitutions. Composite words in which part one part is borrowed and whether another one is substituted. Um, for example, uh, 
Saturday comes from Saturnus Day, Latin Saturnidies, etc. But also we have that, well, in German, um, Showgeschaft from show business in English. But we have also uh, in compound words, in, for example, in Turkish, um, Gülhane. Gülhane is, um, comes from um, uh, Arabic uh, honey, but uh, in, in Persian, Farsi Gül means pink, the pink, the pink room uh, in Istanbul. Well, um, or Kütüb Hane is a um, library room from Kütüb Kitab in, um, in Arabic. Well, and the third one is substitution. The substitution literally, um, a, one, one word is fully substitute for the other. I mean, the, the donor language fully substitutes uh, a given long word from a native language. However, there are different types of substitution. One of them is uh, loan meaning. I mean, an indigenous word to which the meaning of the foreign word is transferred. Um, for example, um, we have the word simi. Uh, an Icelandic word mean cable to talk about the telephone. But also we have the long coinage. The long coinage literally means, for one side, the long coinage itself, the long creation, the coinage independent of the foreign word, but created out of the desire to replace a foreign word. For example, brandy in English, uh, substitu substituting the French cognac. Cognac is a location in France. But also we have the long formation. The long formation can be by calc or long translation or by long rendering. The long translation or calc is a translation of the elements of the foreign word. Um, for example, we have rascacielos, literally skyscraper. Um, or uh, we have long rendering. Long rendering is the translation of part of the elements of the foreign word. For example, brotherhood. Uh, I mean, from Latin frater, fraternitas. Frater, brother, and the suffix hood, that's um, the action and effect word. Or fernse, fernse, TV in German, literally seen from far, far seeing. Well, um, on the basis of an importation substitution distinction, Haugen distinguished three basic groups of borrowings. First, long words show morphemic importation without substitution. Long blends show morphemic substitution as well as importation. And long shifts show morphemic substitution without importation. Well, um, the process uh, of borrowing vocabulary occurs for four main reasons. Let's talk about the four main reasons where languages and cultures were devastated, massacred, annihilated, but also the same four reasons of language and culture destruction are the same reasons of creating borrowings. The first of all, historical and territorial conquest. When um, a power, uh, when, a, when a power nation, an empire, conquest, um, uh, several um, lands of territory uh, imposing their language, imposing um, the, their culture. Um, and um, for example, we have in the Spanish empire at the 16th or 17th century, 
in Latin America, or the, Eng the, the English Empire, um, when we talk about uh, the American colonies, or half of Africa, or India, um, the Russian the Russian Empire, uh, when uh, conquered the Turkic speaking uh, people, the Turkic speaking countries, or even though um, the Arabs um, conquering um, Iraq, Iran, north of Africa, even China, when um, a lot of um, countries from Southeast Asia have a lot of uh, Chinese loanwords due to millennia of contact. France conquered also half of Africa and part of Asia also. Casually, uh, the so-called language of control, this casually the so-called the language of United Nations. Well, um, the second, the second uh, reason of creating of language borrowings is also the trade and commerce. I mean, the economical interests. Uh, one of the main reasons of uh, creating borrowing words, uh, long words, cults, and all that stuff is through the, the trade and the commerce. Uh, for example, uh, the Silk Road, um, the, the main way when um, uh, Arabic and Persian uh, long words in, entered, for example, into Turkish, for example, Peynir, the word for cheese, uh, it entered from uh, India to um, Iran and from Indo-Iranian language, from Arabic and from uh, Turkish. Uh, but also, but also we have Sabun. How did the language, which was used only in the Arabian Peninsula, come uh, to be uh, adopted by so many languages in the world? Well, um, Arabic first spread during the expansion of the Arab world during the Middle Ages. After um, Muhammad converted and united the tribes in the Arabian Peninsula into a single Arab Muslim polity, he led the start of the Muslim conquests. Um, the military conquest of the surrounding territory continued aggressively until the Rashidun Caliphate and the Umayyad Caliphate in the seventh century. The Arabs subsumed regions such as Mesopotamia at the Levant and expanded far beyond the Middle East. At its peak, the Arab Empire encompassed part of the Europe, Spain, Portugal, and even Sicily, for the Maltese language, North Africa, the Middle East, Central Asia, and even the Indian subcontinent comprising a total of 29% of the world population. It was under Arab rule that the Arabic came into contact with an influenced language that had seemingly no ties to the Arab world, such as Spanish and Portuguese, Al-Andalus, and also Urdu. Yes even though Farsi and Urdu have a lot of Arabic loanwords. However, as with all great empires, the Caliphate started to decline after defeat of the hands of the Mongols and collapsed after the Ottoman conquest of Egypt in uh, 1517. The extent to which Arab characteristics, including loanwords, were retained in native cultures depending on the length of Arab rule, as well as subsequent historical events. For example, uh, when, um, when we talk about um, in Bosnia-Herzegovina, uh, where the Serbo-Croatian uh, talk in Bos uh, spoken in Bosnia has a lot of Arab uh, and Persian loanwords. Well, ex for example, um, Expanding Christian kingdoms retook the Iberian Peninsula from the Arabs as part of what is known as the Reconquista. The remaining population was forced to convert to Christianity or face expulsion. This resulted in the departure of many Arabs in North Africa or the Ottoman Empire. Despite the enduring mark of Christianity, Arab influence is still evident in the Portuguese word sabao and the Spanish word eh, el jabón. Arabic might 
have also spread through the practice of Islam independent of the military conquest. Adherents of Islam were exposed to the language as the Quran was written in classical Arabic. Most prayers are still recited in Arabic. Through this medium, is Islamic countries who have never experienced Arab conquest have adopted some Arabic words into the native language. This is the case for Malaysia and Indonesia, who both words the word sabun. Evidence of Arabic influence in the archipelago dates back to the 14th century and religious and trade connections have become increasingly established ever since. The process of uh, borrowing vocabulary often occurs or accelerates simply by proximity. Singaporean Hokkien, a brand of the Hokkien language, which is spoken in Singapore, has borrowed extensively from the other languages spoken locally, including Tochu, English, and Malay. It uses the Malay loanword sabun. That's the third reason why do we uh, use a long word. Um, um, the, the, the third main reason why we do use uh, long words um, is precisely the proliferation of, of religion, or in other words, religions as the main vehicle in spreading the language throughout a given era. When we talk about uh, Christianity, we talk about, for example, Latin in, um, in, in the Catholic uh, sphere, or Greek or um, uh, Slavic, um, the, 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 the ecclesiastical Slavic, Pravoslavna uh, in, um, in the Orthodoxy, but also we talk about Arabic in, into Islam, um, but also a lot of Sanskrit words into the um, Dravidical, uh, into the into, into the Dravidian language. A lot of Sanskrit words uh, absorbed by uh, Telugu or by um, Malayalam or um, Tamil or Kannada, and uh, thousands and thousands of Chinese words that entered not only into the countries of uh, Southeastern, uh, Southeast Asia, but also uh, in, in Japan. The kanji, the traditional characters are, uh, were spread through Buddhist monks into Japan, uh, Chinese Buddhist monks into Japan in the ninth century. Uh, so uh, in that sense, religion, uh, uh, as the main vehicle in spreading the language through a given era. The four main reasons to um, borrow in creation is the cultural industry. In addition to the historical and territorial conquest, trade and commerce, and the proliferation of religion, or in other words, religion as the main vehicle in spreading language through a given era, also we have the cultural industry. In that sense, I will um, mention a um, book written by Roger Silverstone, uh, which in, in that book uh, written in 1979 is called um, Television and Daily Life. Despite being written more than 40 years uh, ago, more than, more than 40 years before, is still current nowadays. In one of those chapters, uh, Roger Silverstone talked about the, um, the relation between television and consumption, the television and the consumer goods. I will be very briefly in that sense. The first item that Roger, R Roger Silverstone uh, comes into mention is the mercantilism, the goods, the assets, are not judged by uh, its um, utility, its practical utility or its moral value. Instead, they are valued, um, they, they receive an economical value according to the market. In that sense, um, those uh, goods, those assets uh, are in, uh, taking part into um, interchange system. The second point is, the second item uh, is when those items are part of an interchange system, um, 
the, 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 the countries or the peoples who are involved into, into trade, into commerce, um, assign a symbolic value to those uh, items. Uh, or for me exactly, uh, symbols in the form of items. Um, and according to every, to, every, to every country and according to every people, those items who receive a symbolic value uh, in that sense, uh, several other um, variables are into in, in showing, for example, um, the luxury, the ostentation, the status. Um, uh, when I buy um, the best shoes or the best clothes or the best mobile or the best PC or the best car uh, or the best house, well, it, uh, undoubtedly, uh, when I acquire, when I uh, purchase um, an item, uh, when, um, uh, when, when I purchase an item who is more valuable uh, rather than a first need product, undoubtedly, I am satisfying um, needs that they are social needs. They, I am satisfying needs from social status. The third point is, um, the TV or nowadays the social networks are who establish the value scale of what's uh, most important to buy. It's according to the TV, according to the, um, to the YouTube or according to the social networks, it's much more valuable to buy um, um, a suntory product, uh, an expensive product, or a product that's not for first need rather than a first need. But the, point, the, the, the fourth and last point, who established that value scale? The doll factory, Hollywood, uh, the movies, the series, uh, uh, what about what consume uh, from United States from all from all the series and all the movies and all that entertainment that we consume? Uh, well, you know that I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I observe how uh, even much more children in the primary and secondary education schools here that uh, uh, even more time. Um, they speak with a Mexican accent or with Latino or neutral accent, but not due to the Mexican uh, series or soap operas, but from the, from the American series that they are duped or translated into uh, Mexican or neutral uh, Spanish. And they acquire that, um, that, that, that form of switch. Quiero mi maleta, quiero mi lonchera, quiero esto, quiero esto. So, quiero mi maleta, oh, okay. That, that is cultural appropriation. And that's why I consider that despite not being exactly the same language and culture, one thing fits the other. Just for, finish, for, just for finishing, long words may also be used because there's no equivalent word in the native language, such as for example, sushi. Nonetheless, the word so the word sabun that I was uh, talking uh, previously is not a culturally unique item, suggesting that the recipient language chose to use a loan word instead of their language, uh, instead of their native word for it. Uh, because the donor language and culture has greater appeal or power. Over time, loan words are absorbed into the vocabulary of the recipient language and their origins are often forgotten, even by speakers of the recipient language. Um, the etymology of the Arabic word sabun shows that language evolved over time and cannot be fully understood without understanding the wider historical and cultural context. Well, uh, I'm uh, Matthias Barmat, uh, and I hope that you will like it. Thank you.